Ladies and gentlemen, it's Friday night, and you know what that means. It's time for the wrestling show as Mayhem is here and we are live. Shotzi Blackheart goes one-on-one -on -one with Charlotte Flair in your action here tonight. And that's not all as we are getting the rematch as it goes down. Ilya Dragunov, Ricochet 2 here tonight in your Mayhem card. And in your main event, it's going to be Sola Sokoa going one-on-one -on -one with AJ Styles. And that one right there will be a Money in the Bank qualifier. And as SummerSlam slam goes on we have a contract signing we will be gearing up for right now as we are getting general manager wade barrett as barrett seems like he wants to give the wwe universe a uh, bit of a uh, pre-warm-up as the crowd here tonight is absolutely stoked for what's to come and ladies and gentlemen our general manager here tonight Wade Barrett will be conducting the contract signing for the world's heavyweight championship going down at SummerSlam as it will be John Moxley going one on one with Brian Danielson as we've seen those two were the outcome of their match or they won their matches last week and that right there determined uh, all it took for this one right here. It's gonna be a damn good one, ladies and gentlemen, as Wade Barrett is ready to present the WWE Universe with uh, what entails here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wade Barrett, and I am the general manager for Friday Night Mayhem, but I gotta just stop and thank everybody. Thank each and every single one of you for not only the most impressive Mayhem shows viewership-wise, watch time wise but an overall attendance as we felt the arena sold out at 30,210 people to fill the Bay Arena last week in Germany to have that many people filled in these seats to watch Mayhem Friday show the wrestling show go down in its greatest capacity means the absolute world and I just want to sit here once again and say thank you as we usher in this new era in universe mode, a continued era since post-draft of Mayhem being the freshest and the hottest and the overall best when it comes down to the in-ring work that each and every single one of those gentlemen do in the back tonight, we have one hell of a show for you guys. Tonight, we see the number one contender, Charlotte Flair, go one-on-one -on -one with the first ever women's champion of universe mode history and Shotzi Blackheart. Tonight... We see a match of the year candidate as two men who hold that crown look to go and run it back as Ricochet goes one on one with Ilya Dragunov. And ladies and gentlemen, inside your main event, Sola Sokoa goes one on one with the phenomenal one AJ Styles. And that one right there determines who will be our first man from the Mayhem side to go to SummerSlam's ladder match for the money in the bank. With all that being said, I know what everybody is here to see. It is one thing that we advertised right after the Mayhem at the Beach show because as of last week, Brian Danielson is your new number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship, but he is going to be going against a man, well... Well, I don't know if I'd call him a man. I'd say he's going against a monster, but also a former friend in John Moxley. As these two men at one point here in Universe Mode, before my time as general manager, ran Raw, ran Mayhem when it came down to the Shield. And since both men getting drafted here with the time differences being off, with Brian being hurt, coming back, wrestling at Unforgiven, and having an absolute banger with AJ Styles, with John Moxley being busy with Damian Priest, and then Bronson Reed, he hasn't had time to even congratulate Brian for being back. These two men haven't had time to even see each other since being in the Shield, and that right there, that right there will change right here, right now. Because ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce the challenger and Brian Danielson and the champion and John Moxley as we will conduct a contract signing and a face-to-face -face because after this show, you have three weeks time before you get one of your most greatest world's heavyweight championship matches of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's waste no time. And let's get both these men out here to sign this contract. 
Well, Wade Bear is absolutely fired up and not just for mayhem here tonight, but for what's going down right here, right now, as you see the challenger and Brian Danielson. I mean, listen, everything that goes with Danielson is nothing close but near perfection. When you look at the kind of wrestler that Brian Danielson is, one of the most technical, one of the most aggressive, and one of the most agile wrestlers you will ever see inside the square circle. When it comes down to Brian Danielson and everything that he is capable of, he knows how to get the job done. And get the job done is something that he has been doing over the last couple of months here in universe mode as Brian Danielson has had a almost career-threatening injury and he came back from it he came back for it all and he is ready to sign that contract and get the job done and you see the wild things music is playing and Moxley Moxley making a come out from all the way in the back John Moxley gathering the WWE Universe's attention as they are absolutely fired up for the wild thing here tonight and John Moxley, he is here, he is live, he has the title in hand, and he has put it around his waist as John Moxley knows what needs to be done. Words need to be spilt and signatures need to be put across the contract as ladies and gentlemen, this will be a first time ever matchup as John Moxley has never went one on one with Brian Danielson here in Universe Mode. The big question that everybody has in their mind is what the hell will these two men even say to each other as these two men were once in the Shields and haven't talked to each other since being in that team as both men went in separate directions after the draft. And well, it's gonna be very, very interesting to see how this one goes, ladies and gentlemen, as John Moxley looks like he is hurt, beat up, and I cannot, I can't, I can't blame him. I mean, he went through an absolute war last week with Bronson Reed in that ambulance match. An absolute war, ladies and gentlemen. And what we are going to see here tonight, we're going to see the aftermath of that very war. Listen, gentlemen, I can only imagine how you two might feel here tonight. World Heavyweight Championship match tensions have got to be high. The only question that everybody wants to know is are you ready? Are you ready to make history? Are you ready to defend the great honor of the World Heavyweight Championship once again for the second SummerSlam in a row? Are you ready to represent Mayhem in the best way known how? And that is inside the ring, professional wrestling at its finest. Are you ready? <laughs> Moxley, it has been a while. It's been a very long time. It's, it's, it's felt like almost a lifetime ago. I mean, The Shield didn't even properly get to celebrate with you with the World's Heavyweight Championship because we were ripped apart in the draft. By the way, thank you, Wade, for that one. <laughs> but look at us. We're doing great. Our careers have taken off like never before. You're World's Heavyweight Champion, and I've built myself up to an absolute unstoppable point. But this is where we butt heads. This is where things get a little interesting and, well, I say interesting for you more than me because I can conduct myself in this way, but the last time that I wanted to go after World Championship Gold, you, you stopped me from that. You told me that more important things were going on and at the time there were, the, the, we were in an incredible war with the bloodline. We were on our way to war games and we won that match, and we won that match because of that focus. But this time, this time, is, is there going to be any excuse, or am I going to be able to lock in on that world championship? Because, listen, Moxley, we're brothers, but you know I will do whatever it takes to get my hands on that championship. It's not the WWE championship I want, the North American Intercontinental. I want that title i almost had it at no mercy last year and this is my time here to make it happen SummerSlam, we can make it happen we can give the world what they want we can put on a dream match but in the end you gotta know i am going to do whatever it takes to walk away world's heavyweight champion Listen, last year only happened the way it happened because 
I needed you focus. I needed you focus because at the time we were going to war. At the time we were doing something that meant more than this championship that I held. At least that's what I would have said a year ago. As I stand here before you today, as your brother stands here before you here today because I'm not an idiot. I know what goes on on Raw. I don't know what the hell is going on with what we made but when the shield was a thing we were about brotherhood and that is brotherhood that you promise you'd be a part of so I don't know what this is this is some sort of backhanded gesture you're trying to give and act all respective but really deep down inside I see that resentment that resentment's been there since war games it's been there because since then you haven't had an opportunity to get back to your championship at least the championship that you felt like is yours but the truth is brian it's mine i tried to fix things going into no way out i tried getting the tag team championships on us it didn't work out i've seen an opportunity at wrestlemania i capitalized on this opportunity but for the last few months i have been going through nothing but hell when it comes down to the judgment day getting blindsided getting thrown off of banisters by bronson reed i have not had it easy and i do not expect it to come easy i know this big target is on my back i know what comes with being that lion with being at the top of the food chamber but the thing is the thing is i am not ready to lose this championship i know what kind of competitor you are i trained with you i forged in combat with you but the one thing that you don't know about me is how far I am willing to go to keep this championship and I say this to every single opponent and you will be no different I want that to really stick clear in your head the fact that you won't be different the fact that you won't be different shows that I am not holding you with any regard I am not gonna sit here and take you for granted I know the competitor that you are but I also know that I am better than you I know it's a hard reality to face, but it's the truth, and you're going to see it in three weeks at SummerSlam, and when the bell rings, and when I'm still champion, I hope we can be friends, I hope we can still respect each other, but I hope after that we can respect each other with what we both will know at the end, and that is John Moxley is better than Brian Danielson. Ha, <laughs> better, huh? Better. That's how you want to play this? You, you think you're better than me? The fact that you said everything that you said just shows how little respect you have for me. Just shows how little respect you've ever had for me better than me. Do you know who I am? Do you know why you recruited me to be in the Shield? Because I am the best in the world. Without Brian Daniels in the Shield, wouldn't have been half close with you, Claudio Castanoli, and Seth Rollins. You want to talk about better? Let's talk about the fact that you stopped me from going after the world title last year. You begged me to put my head in the game for War Games, and I won War Games for us. Do you remember that I was the one to pin Solo Sokoa, not you? Not Claudio Castanoli, not Seth Rollins, not Will or Yuta, not you, me. Brian Danielson, I did it. I did it. And where the hell were you guys after Mayhem? Sure, you defended my honor. You came back and went after AJ Styles. But during my build, during my time at Unforgiven, during my comeback, where were you? Where were you? You didn't shake my hand backstage. You didn't congratulate me. You want to talk about what you've been going through with the Judgment Day? The numbers game has been against me as well. You're not the only one that's on an island all by themselves. So don't play victim with me. Don't tell me with you what you're in the mood for. You are still World's Heavyweight Champion. That means something. That matters. And the fact that you think that SummerSlam is just going to be another night for you just shows how little you know me. How little you knew me when we were in the Shield. Because if you knew me Moxley then you would know you would know that I am the one who is willing to do whatever it takes I am the one who is willing to pull that trigger and I showed you last year at war games that I was the guy to get the job done you leaned on me for a reason understand that understand that going into SummerSlam there will be no leaning on me because I am going to be the one to take you out. The age of Brian Danielson has just begun and I am not getting any younger. I am coming to an end. 
My time is coming to an end, and by the end of this era, by the end of Season 3, I will raise my championship tall at WrestleMania, and I will be the world champion, and people will look back at SummerSlam as just another match for Brian Danielson. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this one obviously got hot and heavy as we are on our road to SummerSlam. What started out with two men giving each other nothing but respect turned into, uh, well, egos rising. And this is what's going down, ladies and gentlemen. July 7th in Detroit, Michigan, Brian Danielson, John Moxley for the big gold title as the World Heavyweight Championship will be on the line. Only streaming right here on WrestlePlus. Mark your calendars, July 7th. Oh my God, you have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Ladies and gentlemen, we haven't seen this man in 10 months since the fully loaded. This is the Apex Predator. This is Randy Orton. You think John Moxley's dangerous hell? You think Bronson Reed's dangerous? Then just wait until you are introduced to the three most deadliest words in all of professional wrestling. R. K. O. Ho holy shit! No way! No way! What? What? Ladies and gentlemen! That's John Cena! And he wants more! He wants more! Welcome back, Randy! And welcome back, Cena! Wow! What is Wade cooking? You know, John... I really thought that this was done. I really thought that this whole fight between us would be over. I, I really thought that you would understand your place after I took everything from you, but you found a way to get a loophole. You found a way to take advantage of the draft, and now you are signed to a contract a five-month contract for the next five months I have to bear you on the same roster as me and that is not something that I think that I can do you see these voices in my head they get louder and louder and after last week something is definitely more clear than ever and that is that you are a problem Wade Barrett is a problem a problem that I will take care of very very soon because with the last week whether anybody wants to admit it or not, last week was an ambush. Wade Bear told me that I was going out there to tell the WWE Universe about all the accomplishments that I once did and what I will be doing going into the future. There was no mention of John Cena coming out. I would have not agreed to any of this if there was mention of John Cena being here and Wade knew that so we took advantage of that. You can't tell me you didn't know. Cena was in the building, Wade, and I don't want to hear the excuses. I'm just here to let it be known that I am done listening to excuses. Going forward, the world wants the Apex Predator, where the world got the Apex Predator. You are looking at the most hungriest and fastest I have ever been in my career. And trust me and trust me alone when I tell you that this right here, all these words, they're going to come true. Because Cena, I heard you're going to be here next week. And I want a piece of you. So guess what? I will be here as well. So whatever you have to say, make it count. Because after you say those words, I'm coming out. And I'm looking for a fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've almost waited 20 minutes for action. So we wanted to make sure the first roundabout was the roundabout. It is your match of the year candidate, ladies and gentlemen, as they are running it back. First up, he is the Mad Dragon. He is Mayhem's hottest. He is Ilya Dragonov. Oh man, 
man. Uh, oh man, oh man. This one right here is gonna be damn, damn good. Man, oh man, ladies and gentlemen. Two weeks ago, we seen Dragunov, we seen Ricochet put on one hell of an absolute banger. They both went to management and said, we want more. The Czar wanted more, and the human highlight reel wanted more. And tonight, right now, you are getting more. This one right here is going to be an absolute banger. If you have seen bangers before, you know exactly what this is going to be. But if you are new to the channel, buckle up, check your pulse, because the Mad Dragon is here on the wrestling show. This one. Woo! This one right here, ladies and gentlemen. You know what this man can do in the ring. Since arriving here on the scene in Universe Mode a month ago, he has been nothing short than excellent. And he looks to continue to prove that and continue his undefeated streak as Ilya Dragunov is yet to take a loss here in Universe Mode. Man, oh man, will this banger right here be able to follow Pursue? As you see, on one end we got the Mad Dragon and coming out with the entire world singing behind him. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the face of Friday Night, the human highlight reel himself. He is Ricochet. Ricochet is here, he is ready to go, new attire and all, and ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you the story of Ricochet, Ricochet along with Ilya Dragunov have been on the path to greatness, have been on the path to trying to get the North American Championship, but both men recognized each other and understood that in order to get to that next step, they must defeat each other. That brought them to their matchup a couple of weeks ago in one hell of a matchup, what some people are saying is match of the season, match of the year, which is insane to think about, thinking of the list of matches that we've already had in this one year. But ladies and gentlemen, Ricochet and Dragunov look to run it back here tonight, as in the first bout, it was Dragunov who walked away with the victory. Here tonight, the big question is, well, who's gonna be able to walk away with the victory as Ilya Dragunov definitely doesn't wanna take a loss, and I doubt Ricochet wants to take another one as well. Ladies and gentlemen, you have waited 22 minutes for wrestling action, and wrestling action is coming your way as here we go, Dragunov and Ricochet running it back as Ricochet bounces off the rope. Beautiful work there, hitting a backhanded elbow off of the ropes. You know, you talk about the unorthodox style of Ricochet. It is definitely something to talk about. As, oh, beautiful uppercut there by the human highlight rule. I mean, you talk about the people that Ricochet has been in the ring with. Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole, freaking CM Punk. When it comes down to Ricochet, he has been in the ring with them all. And although he hasn't, win, he hasn't won all of them, the experience that you hold going against the likes of men like those are definitely something not only to do to your career, but something to uh, well do to your offense. As being in the ring with all those different guys has definitely got to you know do something to your confidence as well. I mean, Ricochet has been on this upper echelon for a pretty long time here in Universe Mode, and he's just been waiting to move on to that next step. Right now, Dragonoff is in his way. Before it was the Judgment Day. Ricochet needs to be able to move on. As beautiful suplex there. Ricochet showing off and showing out here tonight, understanding in order to stop the Mad Dragon or at least stop him in his course for a second. He needs to stay on the attack. Beautiful bicycle knee there by Ricochet as Ricochet said it before. I'll say it again, continuing to stay on the attack. That is exactly what you want to see there by Ricochet, but Dragunov now turning it around. Dragunov tonight might make me eat my words as Ilya now going off here tonight on Ricochet as now he is looking for some time to go in and time to throw his offense in there a little bit and I gotta say that's gotta be the dangerous part here tonight. That's gotta be the part that Ricochet needs to pay the most attention to as Ilya Dragunov as we all know is no easy man to be into the ring with and as you see every maneuver he hits with every move he hits such aggressiveness such fierceness behind it. Ilya Dragunov I gotta say is somebody that uh well, I definitely wasn't expecting to see his type of seasoning on this roster here in this season as Ricochet turning it around there. Using that speed to his advantage as Ilya Dragunov may be fast, but, well, you are not fast like the human highlight reel is now. Ricochet now using, using that top rope to his advantage. What does he have in mind? Beautiful work by Ricochet. 
and deciding not to go for a cover as he wanted to go for something there, but Ilya dragging on, moving out of the way, hooking the arm back and hitting him with a suplex. Beautiful maneuver there by Ilya dragging off. I mean, you want to talk about control. You want to talk about finesse. You want to you talk about Ilya dragging off. As now, wait a minute, wait a minute, what the hell is he's lining up? Ricochet four, I think we're gonna get a little torpedo. Moscow! Into the cover! No! Not like this! Ricochet knows what it's like to feel that torpedo Moscow. Ricochet knows what it's like to go down to such maneuver. And he says, no, 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 not again. And oh my God. Man, oh man, I mean, you see this. He is firing off on all cylinders here tonight. That's dragging off now, top rope, lining up Ricochet, begging Ricochet to get to his feet. And oh! Rolling senton there by dragging off. As I think Dragunov understands and realizes that he's going to have to go to the wishing well here tonight. If he wants to walk away with the victory, he's going to have to really dig down deep. Because Ricochet is going to do that. Using the rope to his advantage. Ricochet now into the cover. Is this one going to be a no? No, no, no. Ricochet having, having more left in the tank to fight here tonight and that right there is the ricochet that we know and love ricochet now with a spinning elbow missed out there by dragging off dragging off now has ricochet up on the shoulders and bounced off of the rope beautiful stun gun into the cover charles robinson down for the cover is this one going to be a dragon off to go 2-0 on ricochet and no as these men going all out here tonight and again you see those devastating sentons being delivered there by Ilya dragging off and dragging off now, looking to knock Ricochet out to the outside. Ricochet says no, though. Using the ropes, bouncing through. Close line by the human highlight reel. And if you ask me, this is exactly what Ricochet needed. A little pocket of space, a little moment to breathe. And now Ricochet up and down goes. Wait a minute. Follows through again. I mean, come on. Come on, this right here is, look at this, Ricochet going to the outside with a splash, but missed out. Dragging off at him, well scouted, moved out of the way. And now Ricochet getting back into the ring with ease. And oh, oh! recoil out of nowhere. One, two, three, no. Holy, wow, and Ricochet from the heavens. Ricochet continuing to do what he does also best, and that is show up and show out as Ricochet now goes down and goes down hard. Ilya dragging off, man. This guy is a man made of something different as the Mad Dragon seems like he has a plan in mind. Brings him into the corner in a devastating clothesline. Uses the ropes to his advantage. And throws Ricochet down as Dragunov now has unleashed an absolute world of pain on Ricochet here tonight. Ricochet now down for the count. Dragunov top rope doesn't know what to do, but he's looking for it. Sent on to Ricochet. Dragunov wants it. Dragunov needs it. The only thing... The only thing that Dragunov needs to do is go into that back pocket. As, oh, wait a minute, Ricochet going to the outside and Dragunov meeting him. As, look at that, that ring IQ there by Ilya Dragunov is something seen by many as impressive to say the least. His own oh man, look at that beautiful work there by Ilya Dragunov knocking down Ricochet here tonight, showing Ricochet exactly the kind of wrestler that he is, showing that he is not going anywhere as it was just a few weeks ago that Dijak and AOP put Dragunov on notice. And he is continuing to show off here tonight, continuing to dominate. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, dragging off wants Ricochet in the ring. I don't think Ricochet can get up. Santana on the outside! What kind of man is he made of? Wow! Wow! Wow, wow.
Ricochet not playing any games here tonight. Firing off on all cylinders. As look at this, brings him right back into the squared circle. Ricochet now, what does he have in mind for dragging off? Oh, dragging off one of the Torpedo Moscow. Ricochet wanted a bicycle kick. Both men missed, but Ricochet caught him with a moonsault off the second rope. Ricochet's high flying ability coming to the aid once again. If Dragunov hit that Torpedo Moscow, that right there would have been all she wrote. And Ricochet deep down inside, he knows that. That's why he is fighting like he has never fought before. As look at this now, Dragunov, Dragunov into the leg scissors there by Ricochet. As Ricochet is not playing any games here tonight, doing whatever the hell he has to do to walk away with the victory. As Dragunov now brings Ricochet right into the referee. I don't think that's where he wanted to be. And now, wait a minute. Ricochet fighting back, doing what he has to do. Perfectly done there by Ricochet. You talk about evenly scouted. You want to talk about these two men having each other evenly scouted every which way it goes as Dragunov now looking to turn it around. Ricochet bouncing right off of him, spinning through, catching him in the leg scissors. And oh! Beautiful Hurricane Rana kicking up and dropping down with a moon saw that is Ricochet feeling nothing more than momentum here tonight inside the square cover, inside the square circle, into the cover, excuse me, as Ricochet, wow, feeling the momentum, knowing what he wants to do, but the big question is can he capitalize on the Mad Dragon here tonight as, oh, and a uh, man, the height caught by Ricochet as the human highlight reel looking to make a couple of highlights here tonight through the rounds. Wow, wow, wow. And ladies and gentlemen, I've just been informed that this matchup will continue to go time limit free commercial free until we get a winner tonight as Ricochet now brings up and oh my god power bomb on the outside by Dragunov and now just continuing to decimate Ricochet any way that he sees fit man oh man Dragunov Top rope, maybe thinking about going for that senton again. This time a knee strike, but misses. Dragunov holding that knee in absolute pain. But Dragunov knows what he wants to do here tonight. Ricochet now. Oh my God, just getting absolutely taken down. Beaten and battered. Beaten and battered as Ricochet. As Ricochet now thinking about what to do. Nowhere to go, nothing to do, and oh my god, look at this completely uncensored as Ricochet, excuse me, dragging off. His face almost came off of his head as the crowd wants it. Torpedo Moscow into the cover. Oh, he does it. Again, but in great fashion. The Mad Dragon is a man of many. And this man right here just knocked off the human highlight reel again. Ladies and gentlemen, just to remind you for your main event, it will be a Money in the Bank qualifier as one of these men are going to go to SummerSlam to the ladder match. Will it be Solo Sokoa or the phenomenal one, AJ Styles? Find out. But coming up next will be women's action as Charlotte Flair is the new number one contender for the women's championship. And she will be going a one-on-one -on -one with the first ever champion and Shotzi Blackheart. Ladies and gentlemen, next week Finn Balor will return as he will have a live microphone in his hand and he will be speaking on everything that went down last week at Mayhem at the Beach. What the hell does he have to say? Well, we'll find out next week. Ladies and gentlemen, as we have SummerSlam right around the corner taking place July 7th, July 5th, will be two days before, and that'll be the Mayhem Go Home Show of SummerSlam. But more importantly, that'll make one year 
that mayhem has been a thing here on the Wrestle Plus YouTube channel as we bring in Mayhem Anniversary. And with that being said, we want to uh, already kick it off with a couple of bangers as we can already confirm that at Mayhem Anniversary, we will be seeing John Cena in action. And that's not all. As also, AOP will be defending their tag team championships in the main event at Mayhem Anniversary against a tag team. Well, I guess we'll have to see who that tag team will be in the next couple of weeks. Hey, 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 boss man, don't, uh, don't mean to interrupt, but I've been trying to get a hold of you for a little bit now. I need to talk to you. You see, I'm your North American champion, which means aside from the world championship, my business also concerns you, which... Brings me to ask, why haven't I been considered for Money in the Bank? I mean, you give people like Solo Sokoa opportunities and he won, what, one match since being back here? You give people like AJ Styles opportunities and his last match he lost. You're giving all the losers opportunities to go for Money in the Bank when Money in the Bank is the most prestigious thing that could be here in universe mode that is the ultimate number one contenders contract for a major championship which means not only should major talent be in there but i should be in there i should have the opportunity to make history by being the first man ever to walk in with the north american championship and the first man ever to walk out with both north american championship and money in the bank what do you say boss make it happen you know what don jack who am I to stand in the way of history? You want an opportunity to be at SummerSlam, you got it. But champion or not, you're going to have to earn it like every other competitor. So next week, you'll be in the main event. But your opponent will be no easy man because you're going to go one-on-one -on -one with Bronson Reed. Well, Alright ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get right into the women's action as our new number one contender for the Women's World Championship, Charlotte Flair, is here live and she is ready to go as, well last week she had definitely a, a good victory against one Becky Lynch as Lynch was on the top of the women's division for a very long time and coming out of Unforgiven, well she tried to, sort of had to try to find her way here in universe mode and that next step for Charlotte Flair was Becky Lynch. Same with Lynch to Flair. Both of these women needed to go through each other in order to move on to that next step, being SummerSlam, being Rhea Ripley in that Women's World Championship, and Charlotte Flair was able to get the job done. Either Whether it's a moonsault or whether if it's a figure eight, Charlotte Flair finds a way to get the job done. And don't even get me started on that natural selection. When it comes down to Charlotte Flair, the amount of moves that she has in her arsenal is unheard of. Well, Charlotte is one of those superstars that you look at and you know, you really gotta look twice at because she's a generational talent, to say the least. And now she is looking at herself going into a pay-per-view almost a year later. That right there has gotta be a shame. Well, listen, Charlotte Flair hasn't seen pay-per-view uh, spotlight since the Survivor Series pay-per-view that took place back last year in season two of Universe Mode. And now here in season three, she looks to try to make this one a uh, similar season, but what I can argue, maybe a different ending as this is a different Charlotte Flair since making her return in that women's number one contender battle royale she has just had a different focus a different kind of sharpness to her to her in ring ability to her mic skills everything Charlotte Flair well it's been a little different since returning to universe mode but tonight ladies and gentlemen she is going against no easy woman as this is the first time that we have ever put this match up together here in universe mode as we have not seen her uh, you know for a while here in universe mode but the crowd obviously as loud as they are, they are going absolutely insane for the first ever women's world champion, Shotzi Blackheart. As, like I said, yeah, first ever women's world champion. It was back in season one of Universe Mode where Shotzi won the Elimination Chamber and walked out. First ever women's world champion and one hell of a uh, championship run she definitely had. Going on to WrestleMania, fighting Rhea Ripley, valiant effort and then losing. But still, if it wasn't for Shotzi paving the way as that first ever women's world champion, a lot of conversations we're having now we definitely wouldn't be having to say the least so listen Shotzi she's one of those wrestlers that she, she's a pillar I'd argue when it comes down to the female uh, the female side here in universe mode but well those pillars are still rising slowly and slowly a lot more slower than the men's stuff but with the addition of the women's continental championship on Wallace and the women's division it has looked uh has looked better than ever here in universe mode 
Shotzi is lined up, ready to go, and she is ready for uh, to bring pain to Charlotte. You definitely see a new look here by Shotzi. First time we're seeing this look here by Shotzi Blackheart, as Blackheart is one of those wrestlers who, well, she's unorthodox to say the least, so it's going to be very, very interesting to see how she'll fare against the Flair and Charlotte Flair. It's going to be an interesting one. But we do just want to remind each and every single one of you that inside our main event, we will be seeing Money in the Bank qualifier action as Solo Sokoa will be going one-on-one -on -one with the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. What a match that is going to be. But ladies and gentlemen, we need to focus on the ladies. We need to focus on what makes women's wrestling women's wrestling and that's seeing the women well wrestle. Here we go as Charlotte Flair pops off here against Shotzi Blackheart. Blackheart goes down with a big stop there by the number one contender as listen, Charlotte Flair, she's taken a long time to get back to this, this spotlight, to get back to this, uh, you know, time where she's women's world championship, uh, uh, even caliber. A lot of people didn't really see Charlotte Flair in this kind of spotlight for a very long time and rightfully so. Every time Charlotte Flair had an opportunity where she was almost the winner or she almost got that big opportunity, she just kind of fell short on it. But having that new focus, having that new drive has definitely pushed Charlotte Flair to heights that well, I didn't think were possible for her to come back to. As you see, Charlotte staggered here as Shotzi has uh, exactly what she wants to do to Charlotte Flair in mind here as Flair now in the corner. Shotzi Shotzi has Flair lined up here as look at that head scissors using the rope sword advantage. Beautiful maneuver there and very unorthodox if I can't say so myself there by the first ever women's world champion and Charlotte Flair and oh big spare there by Charlotte. Can I just say very smart pick here by Wade Barrett capturing your first ever women's world champion respecting the lineage of that championship and you know listen. She may have, uh, may not be in the, uh, you know, the top card right now, but Shotzi is definitely wrestling like it, or at least like she deserves to be in that picture. As you see, Charlotte Flair now working away on Shotzi and not playing any games with Blackheart here tonight. As once upon a time ago, Blackheart was looked at as an underdog. Maybe you could say the same case follows here tonight. The size difference is definitely one to look at when you look at Shotzi and Charlotte Flair. It's Flair now with a big suplex, big suplex there by Flair knocking down. Shotzi Blackheart is, listen, Blackheart's going to want to get herself in this one. She's going to want to need to pull herself together if she looks to walk away with a victory here tonight against the number one contender for the Women's World Championship. As look at this now, Charlotte, something else in mind for Blackheart here tonight is look it up on the shoulders, backpack handle, drops her down. Beautifully, beautifully done there by Charlotte Flair. Inside of covers, this one going to be it? No. Right when Flair thinks she put it away, Shotzi just surprising her more and more. And Shotzi's made a career out of, out of surprising all of her opponents, out of being that one person to rise up when nobody expects it. But you see now Charlotte lining her up for what could be the beginning of the end. Goes in for that big lariat. Sh Shotzi moves out of the way in a big reversal there by Blackheart. And look at that. Hurricane Rana like we've never seen it before there by Blackheart. Seems like she has the champion well scouted. Slice bread by the former women's world champion. The exact maneuver to win her the title and no. The same move that won her the title. She thought it would be the same one to keep the championship or not even keep the championship. Maybe put her name back in that picture. As you see now Charlotte Flair has Shotzi and oh. Big power slam there by Flair. Flair fired up and not playing any games here tonight with Shotzi Blackheart as Blackheart is going to want to make sure that she does any and everything to survive here tonight. Although it looked like she was doing that earlier tonight, Flair now is just picking her apart like the vulture she is. And listen, if I'm Rhea Ripley, I am watching very closely as look at this! A Flair signature moonsault that's put so many away in the past. And Shotzi gets added to the list. What a victory here tonight by Charlotte Flair. Fresh off of her victory last week against Becky Lynch. Well, now with Charlotte putting Shotzi and Lynch now in the rearview mirror, I guess you can say Charlotte Flair has uh, nothing left to do than focus on SummerSlam as that is coming your way in less than three weeks time taking place right here. July 7th, oh man, oh man, oh man. Well as much as the, uh, the queen wants to show off here tonight, I don't think that this woman is very impressed with what she's seen as mommy is here. The women's world champion Rhea Ripley has arrived.
and she has seen absolutely enough. Ripley sat back last week and let Charlotte celebrate on that successful win in becoming number one contender. Now a week later, we find Rhea Ripley not letting Charlotte get comfortable with too many celebrations. The biggest party of the summer is right around the corner and Rhea Ripley wants to make sure that her face is all over Mayhem here tonight as it was one hell of a busy week for the Judgment Day last week with Rhea Ripley now not being in control of the Judgment Day anymore. Going back to her place as just a member of the Judgment Day but still being Women's World Champion. There's so much stuff within the Judgment Day that we still have to find out. Personally, I'm excited for it. And whenever Finn Balor comes back, we need to know exactly what the hell is going on. Oh man, Rhea has a microphone in him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, words were said, but at the end of the hour in three weeks, only one thing goes down that matters, and that is Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair at SummerSlam. But ladies and gentlemen, the action does not stop because later tonight, wait, no, I'm getting it in my headset that coming up next, we're wasting no time. It's main event time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Mayhem will continue to be that show because next week, Ilya Dragunov will be stepping in the ring with Sheamus and a Money in the Bank qualifier. Who's going to SummerSlam? Find out next week. And speaking of next week, the return of John Cena. The franchise player is here, and he is ready to talk with a live microphone in hand. And, ladies and gentlemen, tag team action. As the Alpha Academy look to get a win back from last week, and they will be in action against Pretty Deadly. And that's not all because Finn Balor will also be returning with a live microphone in his hand and inside your main event it's big Bronson Reed as he goes one-on-one -on -one with Dijak it's gonna be a hard-hitting one meat madness will consume mayhem next week right here on Wrestle Plus ladies and gentlemen we want to thank each and every single one of you for stopping by in this one as it's time for your main event, Big Solo Sokoa going one-on-one -on -one with the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. Listen, Solo Sokoa, three weeks back, said to Wade Barrett, listen, all I need is an opportunity to show that I can survive here on Mayhem. All I need is an opportunity to show that I have it and it Solo Sokoa has as week after week he's continued to prove it in his last big victory being against Sheamus a few weeks back here in universe mode and what a win that was for his career listen you talk about Solo Sokoa beating the likes of the Celtic Warrior that is insane work and work that has got done here in universe mode work that Solo Sokoa can reflect on and he can proudly say going into this matchup well that wins and losses well they matter as Dijak feels differently about that uh, that statement as earlier tonight he complained about this man being in the qualifiers as the phenomenal one AJ Styles making his return here to Universe Mode for the first time since the Unforgiven pay-per-view and what a pay-per-view it was what a match it was when he went one-on-one -on -one with the man himself the GOAT himself the American Dragon and Brian Danielson listen everybody likes to talk about classics we're gonna talk about what Ricochet and Ilya Dragunov did earlier tonight for seasons on but what we will always talk about for pay-per-views on it doesn't matter what season is Unforgiven 2024 when this man 
man, AJ Styles went head to head with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. Listen, so much story was put in that match. You see the likes of the victory of that match, where it's put, you know, Brian Danielson. Now he's the number one contender for the top prize here on Mayhem. But AJ Styles still trying to find himself, still trying to find a, a, a reason to still do this very thing here. You see, he's growing out the beard. He is just, he, he's wolfing it out in more ways than one. I wouldn't just, I'd say the beard is a representation of his career here in Universe Mode. The, the continuous spirals of, uh, of losses over and over again. It has to do something to this man. And this man needs to do something about it. And right here tonight, he is looking to do exactly something. As ladies and gentlemen, Charles Robinson will be officially officiating this one for the main event here tonight. In our first ever Money in the Bank qualifier for the Mayhem side of things as oh man, this is the first time ever that Mayhem has been uh well Mayhem has been around on the road to SummerSlam. Mayhem came to be right after SummerSlam last year as we were kickstarting our official uh, uh, end of the year calendar. It's crazy to say that we are already in month six of 2024. The year has just been going by, but Universe Mode content has not stopped and it will not stop as oh look at that. AJ Styles take it down. Solo Sokoa there. Beautiful work there. Dastardly work there by the Phenomenal One. AJ Styles as Solo now getting pounced right into the corner. Knocking his head off there is AJ Styles looking to pick up Solo Sokoa. Does so, but Solo would have flowed over DDT. Beautiful work there. You see, Solo Sokoa has switched up how he's wrestled, the way he's wrestled, the style uh, um, of clothing that he's come out into wrestling. You know, Solo Sokoa has done any and everything to move out of Roman Reigns' shadow, to move out of the Bloodline shadow and show that he can do more post-WrestleMania season than what he was doing in his match with Roman Reigns. Solo Sokoa has said plenty of times in the past that when the time is right, he's going to go back after the Bloodline. Do I personally think that the time is right? Well, it could be. Solo Sokoa could win this matchup. There's an opportunity he could go to SummerSlam and win that Money in the Bank briefcase. I mean, people don't want to talk about it, but it is the truth. It's the case scenario that could be there. But then again, you look at a guy like AJ Styles. You look at a guy like Brian Danielson, seeing the history that those two men have. You can see Brian Danielson win that World Heavyweight Championship at, you know, at SummerSlam. And then post-SummerSlam, we could be looking at a World Heavyweight Champion Brian Danielson and a Mr. Money in the Bank and AJ Styles. A dream rematch lined up from the hatred that those two men have for each other. I mean, there is so much that can go down in this Money in the Bank just based off of this match alone. The trajectory continues to get changed each and every single time we get a qualifying match. And the same case will be present on Raw. As you see here now, Solo Sokoa still continuing to work on that arm at AJ Styles as whoever wins this matchup right here tonight. Oh, beautiful work into the corner there. As whoever wins this matchup here tonight will join Adam Cole and CM Punk, who are already officially members of the 2024 Money in the Bank ladder match for this year's SummerSlam. As you see now, what does what does Solo have in mind here to AJ Styles? Flying headbutt! One thing I will continue to stress and say over the seasons of Universe Mode is one thing you do not want to do is headbutt a Samoan. It is one of the most dangerous things that you can possibly do. As look at this now, Solo. Looks to crash down and crash down hard there on AJ Styles, but Styles wants absolutely none of it. Now brings Solo into the corner here. What does he have in mind? As AJ Styles in big trouble and Solo with a Yaranagi. Sitting AJ Styles down right in the center of the ring. I mean, let's talk about it. When's the last time we've seen AJ Styles get humbled in a match? quite like this. You want to talk about the fact that Solo's been around? Listen, Solo's a seasoned vet, but being in this singles capacity, well, I'd say he's uh, he's just as much of a rookie as Dijak is. Listen, I know it's harsh words, but it's the truth. This man right here, he's wrestled all over the world countless amount of times. He's wrestled numerous amount of times with the bloodline. He has never been he has never been in a capacity like this before. He showed it in the gauntlet match on the Mayhem premiere here in season three, and he's showing it now. Every time this man steps into the ring, every time he wrestles, his in-ring IQ gets built up more and more. You're seeing it here as he is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the phenomenal one, AJ Styles, as Styles is no easy man to beat, and both of these men are going at it here tonight. Solo hits one, Styles hits one, but now Solo, Solo continuing to try to fight back, but Styles says no. Styles with a couple of strikes and oh! Sits down Solo Sokoa as we are gonna go on commercial break. We'll be right back right after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to take a minute to give you guys a quick reminder that SummerSlam is our next pay-per-view and it will be coming your way July 7th right here on the YouTube channel. And two days before then, we will be celebrating Mayhem Anniversary, July 5th. Make sure you guys are here. Hopefully you guys are. If you are, can't wait. Because ladies and gentlemen, we are back from commercial break and you see on the outside here, AJ Styles still being able to stay in control, having Solo Sokoa on the outside, continuing his onslaught as, oh, look at that. Solo moves right out of the way and takes down AJ Styles. That right there might have been exactly what Solo Sokoa needed to stay alive in this one. As the referee is on the count of six, both men are gonna wanna be careful to see how they do this one. Solo bouncing off of the ropes and knocking down Styles with a sort of massive clothesline. That right there might have been the thing to change the game. As look at this, you see Solo Sokoa trying to figure out what to do next. As you can tell, Styles' offense has definitely staggered Solo Sokoa. Solo definitely does not know where he's at or what the hell is going on, and you cannot blame him. You cannot blame him at all whatsoever. As look at this now, Solo Sokoa looked like he wanted to do something big there, maybe thought twice about it. Smart job there by Solo Sokoa. Listen, you know, you know, over overthinking in a wrestling ring, it could happen, but overplaying your hand happens all the time. And Solo Sokoa taking a second to slow himself down in this matchup, that right there takes guts. Guts that Solo Sokoa obviously has. But as I say guts, you see AJ Styles fighting back here tonight, not playing any games. Not playing any games as look at this solo continuing the onslaught, continuing the fight to AJ Styles and this time it's solo that gets the upper hand. Right before the commercial break it was Styles to get the upper hand, it was Styles that was looking good. Styles gets tangled up with the referee and this time gets taken down. Solo Sokoa is in his element, he is on game and he is on point here tonight. Styles now right into the corner. What does Solo Sokoa have in mind here? Looking to go for some dastardly. Oh my God! Tosses Styles to the other side of the ring. Now what does Solo have in mind? Flying headbutt from the outside. Flying headbutt from the outside gets him as Solo takes down Styles in the only way that he knows how, and that is inflicting the maximum amount of pain that he knows to be true. We are seeing shades of Bloodline Solo. As look at this, Solo Sokoa, what does he have in mind here for AJ Styles? Big ol' suplex, but laying him flat. Solo now bringing Styles in the corner. Clubbing Styles down and now just kicking him right into the face. If you ask me, that flying headbutt on the outside, that right there truly wrapped it up. But the continuing onslaught of headbutts right there is just showing the kind of monster that Solo Sokoa is. Solo now with another one. Rikishi would be proud. So would Omaga as a spinning solo to the phenomenal one. The same thing that put away the Celtic Warrior. And he put away the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. Styles just got put away with a spinning solo. Has the world stopped? I don't know. But what I do know to be true is that Solo Sokoa just marked himself on a straight trajectory to SummerSlam. Solo Sokoa has officially, officially qualified for money in the bank. Is Solo champion material? Well, we're going to have to find out. What? N what the hell? No way. What the hell is he doing here? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've seen, we seen the Rock on Raw. We've seen him last week at Raw at the beach. And he is making his name known, making his face shown on the green brand. As Solo won, The Rock comes out. Maybe The Rock senses that Solo is this much closer to Roman Reigns in that WWE Championship. I can't imagine Solo going after anything else. Oh man, oh man, oh man, this just fired up. Oh man, we are two minutes to go off the air. The Rock is asking for a microphone in hand. And when The Rock wants a microphone, you give him a microphone. The Rock isn't here to make an enemy out of you. No, The Rock is here for one reason and one reason only. Little cousin, win money in the bank. Find redemption 
and become Plan B. And if I can't stop the bloodline at SummerSlam, then you have to. Wow, well The Rock letting it be known to Solo Sokoa that if I can't be the guy to do it at SummerSlam, then you gotta be the one to do it. You are Plan B. Solo Sokoa has been revealed to be Plan B on The Rock's attempt to take down the bloodline. This one goes deeper than brand supremacy. This one is about bloodline business.